Uh, in today's video, I'm going to go through um, how to make the first belly on the whip that we've been making, uh, and that will be plaited over the core that we've made in the previous videos. Uh, before we get to that bit, though, we need to determine how long our strands are going to be. Uh, and what I'm actually doing is uh, I'm going to combine the longest strand and the shortest strand together. They'll be actually connected at the handle end. Um, so I'm going to work out what length those are. Uh, and then see what the total length is of, of each strand. So we're going to be cutting four strands, which will be folded in half, uh, and we need to find out where exactly we need to fold those and how long we need to cut the total strand. So I'm referring back to the table, uh, which I did in the second video, uh, on the theory video, um, using these numbers at the top to help me determine where the strands want to drop out, and then I'm going to use this formula, times two plus six inches, uh, to determine the length of those strands. So we're going to start here uh, on strand 8 on the first belly. So the first belly, strand 8, wants to drop out at 15.5 inches. So that times 2 plus 6 is 37 inches. Okay, now I'm going to go across here because strand 8 and strand 1 are going to be joined. Uh, so I'm going to find out what strand one length is going to be. So going along my table up to here, I see strand one wants to drop out at 47 inches. So we go 47 times two equals 94 plus six equals 100 inches. And then we know that the total length that we need here is from this first strand is 137 inches. So I'll go through that on the next one. So here we are, belly one, strand number seven. We want it to drop out at 20 inches, so that will come out to 46 inches. And then we want that connected to, oh, my phone's dying. <laughs> we want that connected to strand two. So belly one, strand two drops out at 42.5. So what's that? That's 84, 85 inches, 91. And then we want to add those two together, so we have 91 plus 46 equals 137 inches. Now you can see here, we're actually, because we're shortening on one side and lengthening on the other side, these will probably will add up to 137 inches as we go along. But we'll work it all out through just to make it simple. So here we are, strand 6. We know that it wants to drop out at 24.5 inches, so that's 48, 49, 55. And then strand 3, which will be connected to it, we want to drop out here at 38 inches. Brain fart, so I'm going to do it on the calculator. 38 times 2 equals 76 plus 6 equals 82 inches. Okay, so we'll add 55 to that, and there we go, 137 inches. And we're going to go for the last one here, which is going to be number 5, so we go along belly 5, we want that to drop belly 1 <laughs> to strand number 5, we want that to drop out at 29 inches, so 29 times 2 is 58 plus 6, 64. And then strand number four on belly one, we want to drop out at 33.5 inches. So 33.5 times two equals 67 plus six equals 73. So then 73 plus 64 equals 137. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'll take you over to the measuring hook. Uh, we'll measure out our different bits of cord. So we've got four pieces we want at 137 inches. And then we're going to have to put a knot mm -hmm. along them. Uh, so we'll put a knot in at 37 inches. We'll put a knot in at 46, 55 and 64. And that will give us our different lengths. Uh, I'll show you exactly that in just a few moments time. So I'm back here by the measuring hook. And 
going to proceed in pretty much the same way as we started measuring out the core. Um, this time around though I only actually need to measure one strand and then I can use that to measure all the rest of mine. Um, so we're going to start off with 137 inches um, and I'm going to take my tape like so. I'm going to pull this down to 50 inches. We'll do one more length of 50. And then we'll do one at 37. So then I'm going to hold up here and this is where I'll cut. Get my nice blunt scissors. <laughs> okay, so now I've got the, the piece that I, I want at 137. Uh, I know that I want four pieces, so all I'm going to do is just hold these together, run them through my hands, and just try and make sure as you're coming through, everything's coming through straight, so you get a nice proper measurement. Now when I get to this end, I'm going to cut it, put all three ends together, and then we'll run back through for three pieces. three pieces, I need one more, so I'm going to cut it once more. There's plenty of uh, extra in our measurements as well, so don't be worried if you end up in this situation where one side is pulled a little more than the other, don't worry too much because we've got loads and loads of extra built into our design at this stage. So I'm going to pull those through and then we'll have all four of our strands. So now I'm going to cut these four strands, so I'm going to take all four ends, put them next to each other, and just tease out the white inner strands from all four of them. I'm going to pull out as much as I can, and then I'm going to tie off this hook. And the way I do that is with hard pitches, so I'm just sort of making a loop putting it over the hook and doing that again until it's secure. So we've got that nice and secure and what that now means is that I can walk away from my hook and it'll help me pull out all these strands in a while. There we go. So I have my four strands here. Now I'm just going to lay them down onto the ground uh, and I'm going to refer back to my chart. Let's just take this one off. I'm going to refer back to my chart to see where I need to knot them to get our eight individual strands. So our first one I want knotted at 37 inches so I'm going to put one of my strands back on the hook here. I'm going to pull it down to 37 inches. I'm going to hold here and then I'm just going to make an overhand knot. And try and make sure that it's right next to your fingers. There we go. Now I'm going to use these two hooks up here just to hang it. Uh, but I'm going to pay attention to which side my shortest strand is on. So I'm going to start with my shortest strand on the right hand side and then on the next strand I'm going to put the shortest strand on the left hand side and we're going to work these into two groups so there'll be two strands on one hook there'll be two strands on the other hook. So our next one we want to knot at 46 inches so again I'm going to put it on Pull it down to 46, grab up at the top here, and just do an overhand knot like that, and make sure that it's up against your fingers as it tightens. So we started with our short strand on the right, 
This time I'm going to hang it with my short strand on the left. Okay, so then we'll do the next one, which needs to be knotted at 55 inches. So I'm going to pull that one down to 55 inches. And we're going to knock that one off. So we had a short strand on the right, we had a short strand on the left, so this one wants to go with a short strand on the right. But like I say, we're making two groups of our strands. So I'm going to put this on the separate hook with its short side to the right. And then our last one, we want knotted at 64 inches. I've already got a bit of a knot in here, so let's take that out. And my take only goes to 60 inches, so we're going to do 60, and then four more, pull up at the top, and this is where our knot goes. And then this time, the shorter strand is going to go on the left-hand side, on the second group. So now we've got our strands prepared and ready to go onto our core. Um, as I said in the last video, if you want to, uh, it might make it a bit easier for you if you take an iron at this point uh, and iron these nice and flat for yourself. Um, once you've been working for a while, uh, your fingers will work in such a way that you'll be holding the strands flat as you plait. Um, but if you're just starting out, yeah, give them an iron by all means. So I'm just going to show you now how I set up the core ready to be plaited onto uh, and then we'll go through uh, starting the plait um, and how we drop out the strands as we move along the way. Okay well hopefully this will be as clear as mud. So this is how I attach the core and get it prepared for working. Um, so I have a second hook at the back here and then a piece of cord which just runs along. I'm using kind of a trucker's hitch arrangement to hold on here. Now if we look up at the other end, on the actual handle end over here, you'll see that I'm not actually putting a great deal of tension on here at all. It's literally just to hold it straight uh, and just for it to hold its own weight. Because if you put too much tension on, there's two problems that can happen. A, with that hitch that we've got at the other end, you've got a huge amount of leverage and you'll be able to actually pull this off uh, and then you'll have to start reattaching again. The other thing that you can do is that if you stretch this cord too much, um, when you plait over it and then you take the tension off, it's going to want to shrink back down and you'll end up with kind of a wrinkled, uh, a wrinkled finish. The whole thing won't be great. So this is it set up. I'm going to put the camera uh, in place uh, and show you how I go about starting off the plait. Uh, this first one is going to be uh, an eight strand and we're going to drop in singles um, and I'll show you exactly how I do that. Okay, so I'm doing my best here to give you a good close-up shot on how to start your whip-off. Um, so I'm going to take one of the first bundles uh, and I'm going to lay it over the top of the handle like this. With the knots just sitting on top of the handle. I'm then going to take the second group and I'm going to lay them just below the first. So now to start things off, you'll, you'll notice that I've not got it right the way up to the wall. That's just because it's difficult to work next to the wall. And I know that at first we're not going to put a huge amount of tension on. We're just going to lay the strands into the right order. Uh, and then once that's achieved, I can actually slide it straight up. Uh, as far up this handle as I can. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these two strands here and I'm going to pass them underneath, through here and back over again. So I'm going to take them, oh, let's go through here, take them like that 
over the top and I'm going to lay them down just like that. Now the pattern we're going to do here uh, is an under two over two pattern. So our last strands that have come over, we can see here, these have come over from that side. That means that I need this strand here to come over here. So again, without much tension, I'm going to separate with this hand. My fingers aren't really holding all that much. I'm just literally holding things in place. And this one's going to come under here like that and get laid over. So then we're going to go from the other side. So it's this strand which I want to bring through. I'm going to go under two and then over two onto that side like that. Now you can see here, I, A, I'm working around the camera, uh, and B, that is a slight disadvantage of suspending your work like this, is that you have to lift the strands over each time. One of the nice advantages, though, is that you can leave it at any time you like, scratch your head, have a good look at it, um, and carry on working. So I'm knocking the camera. <laughs> okay, so this one's just come over here, so we know that next time we want one of these ones. So we're going to come under here, under two, over two, and lay that one in. And then the same again on the other side. So under two, over two, and we're going to lay that one in. Okay. I'm going to lay this one in. Under two, over two, just like that. You can see here, we're starting to build up our pattern. And at this point, I'm actually before I put any tension on, this is when I'm going to slide it right up to the top there. Now don't worry about all this bit here, because we're actually going to bind this and cut all these pieces off and melt them together. This is where I'm going to start putting in tension, and this is where I'm going to uh, start paying a little bit more attention to um, how I'm laying in the strands. So what I usually do, this is the strand which I want to come over next, so I separate that out like so. I separate where I want the gap to go on these two. And then this finger, I'm going to bring round and just wipe these flat against what I'm plaiting against. This hand's then going to come through, take the strand which I want. I'm going to put a little bit of tension, not as much uh, as we will later on, because I still don't want things to pull through. I'm going to put a little bit of tension on. And you can see here, I put it looped over my top finger, and I'm using this little finger to control the tension. And that kind of, that lets me sense how much tension is going on. I'm going to lay that in, and once it's laid in, you can leave go completely. So I'll do the next one. And what we're trying to achieve here, so this one wipes under, what we're trying to achieve is the same tension on both sides. So that one's wiped down, I'm going to come through, I'm going to grab this one here, put on some tension, and put it over. Yeah, what we're trying to achieve is equal tension on both sides. Now, if you haven't got the right correct tension, what you'll notice is this seam along the top where these cross over will start to drift off to one side or the other side. And if that starts happening to you, you probably need to go back and replat that and just really make sure that you're getting equal tension on both sides. So that once again will start this one has just come over, so I know that this one is the next one. So I'm going to separate that one out, separate where I want the join to go, lay that down like so, and then again as I'm coming through you can see here I'm kind of wiping that one down to make sure that it's nice and flat. And you can see at the top there where it's tightening up. I'm going quite slowly at the moment just so you can see it, but muscle memory kicks in uh, and you'll be able to do this very quickly. But it's, I find it's good to do this because this sort of wiping business, because then it keeps everything nice and flat and it means that it just becomes quite automatic. When you're first beginning though, it's a good idea at this sort of stage to check through your strands and make sure that they're in the right place. So. If you remember the way we arranged our bundles at the start, we should have the first shortest strand on this side, the second shortest on this side, the third shortest on this side, the 
for the shortest on this side, um, etc. So I'm going to do that a couple more times just to show you. And on this first layer, absolutely, go as tight as you can. Uh, we want to grip down hard onto this handle, uh, and we want this, the, the first belly to be quite stiff. It's good advice to plait as tight as you can, mostly. Um, I'll explain as we go through the next layers why that's not always a good idea. So this is it, we're just going to keep on plaiting in this pattern over to under two until we come to where we're going to drop out our first strand. I'm being limited a little bit by the camera so I'm not able to go quite as fast as I usually do. But this is quite a nice thing to do, you know, you can kind of put on some music and uh, you find yourself getting into a rhythm with it. This is also a good opportunity if you're just starting out to check underneath here and make sure that underneath your plait you haven't got any twisted strands because if you get a twisted strand uh, you'll end up with a little lump there uh, in the next layer. Um, so if you do get a twisted strand it's good to go back and just make sure uh, that you've laid it in without any twists. Okay, I'm going to carry on plaiting now. Um, I'm going to leave it for you guys because uh, it might get a bit boring. <laughs> but um, I'll get you to join me again when we drop out our first strand. Okay, so I'm approaching now where I want to drop off my first strand. And there's a couple of clues that tell me that a strand is about to drop out. Firstly, I can feel here in the core where one of our strands drops out in the core. Um, the other thing that tells me is that one of these strands is starting to get quite short. But our core might not be perfect because of the way that we made it with the, the tensions and things as things settle you might have this a little bit before a little bit after where you want to drop out that's not too much of a problem but what i am going to do is i'm going to take this here and i'm going to use the measuring tape to see exactly where i want to drop out now i wanted to drop out at 15.5 inches but remember i've got an extra inch on the end of the handle which we're going to chop off at the end so I'm going to drop out at 16.5 inches. So you can see here, this is the strand which I want to drop. So I'm going to drop it on the next time round. Now I can drop at the top or I can drop at the bottom. Um, and at the moment, because it's the first strand to drop, that's completely my decision. So what I'm going to do is get this as close to this point here as I can. And that's where I'm going to drop it. So I'm going to do one more on this side. So I'm going to wipe down wipe down, tension, and lay it in. And then I'm going to bring this one over. So we're going to go wipe down, wipe down, tension, and over. There we go. So I'm actually going to drop this one at the top. And uh, you can see at the moment it's dropping at the bottom. So this is how to drop out at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep on plaiting until this strand is where this strand is. So I'll just show you what that looks like. And apologies for knocking the camera all the time. <laughs> it's just behind my elbow. But it's the only way I can get a decent shot for you guys. So. So, 
I have this short strand at the top where I want to drop, want it to drop out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through as if I'm going to plait it. I'm going to pull it through to where I want it to go. I'm going to put the tension on and then I'm going to let it go. And the reason I do that is because as we're plaiting, as we're putting that tension on, it's making everything grip up here. So even though we're going to drop this one out, we still want it to grip in here. Um, the other thing is on these first layers, on the first, uh, the first and the second belly, what I do is I drop to the outside. Uh, on the overlay, we'll be laying these strands in underneath all the other ones before cutting them off. On these layers, because they're being held by themselves and the layers above them, we don't need to have this extra material underneath and we'll get a better taper um, by dropping to the outside. So this is actually quite an easy thing to do. So I've put my tension on this one and all I'm going to do is just loosely tie it off out of the way. Now I'm going to come back in again from the same side and I'm going to take the next strand and I'm going to lay that one in. So now you'll notice we have four strands on one side, three strands on the other side. So because I dropped from the top, I've dropped a strand from the top pair on this side. So this time around when I come in, I'm going to come under one over two on this side. And the other side, because we haven't dropped any strands yet, is going to be the same as before, under two over two. And that's it, we're going to keep on flatting now for another, what is it, four and a half inches, under one, over two on one side, under two, over two on the other side. So I'll get you to join me back when we come down this far and I'll show you how to drop out on the other side. So here I am, I'm ready to drop out on the other side, on this side. This one's getting shorter. I can feel in the core that this is where my strand ends. And then to triple check, I have here this one. I want it to drop out at 20 inches on the um, on the whip, but we've got an extra inch at the hand length, so 21 inches. Now you might notice it's very subtle actually. Um, as you drop out in single strands, what's gonna happen is your uh, your seam is going to shift ever so slightly to one side. Now in order to bring that back to center for our uh, equal patterns, uh, I'm going to drop from the other end. So on this one we dropped at the top, this one I'm going to drop at the bottom. So I'll show you quickly how to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it back through the pattern, lay it in, and then I'm going to Flat in the next one above it. And I'm going to give it a pull. And I'm going to tie that one back. And now I'm going to continue plaiting as if it's not there. So I'm pull that one down. And this next one to come over is going to go under two and just over one. So now what we have is under one over two on one side and under two over one on the other side. And then again I'm knocking the camera <laughs> uh, and we're just going to carry that on down until we go to our next drop. Now you might be wondering why I don't put lead in my whips. Um, the reason is basically I found that when you put in, you know, if you're doing a solid core and two bellies and then an overlay on top, you've got a lot of cord in the whip and once it gets waxed it's actually of a very similar weight and reacts in a very similar way um, to a leather whip. The other problem which I encountered 
when I was experimenting with it was that where the lead drops off okay you can get the taper on your whip good you can get the taper and stiffness good but you do have a drop off in in mass and it's quite difficult to kind of make that work well with the whip that's not to say that people don't there are excellent whip makers out there who use lead in their whips uh, and if that's something that interests you I'd watch a few videos and maybe ask directly and politely um, the people who make whips like that um, but I prefer just using all cord uh, in my whips okay so I'm approaching now where I want to drop out my next stand uh, next strand uh, on this side um, but I thought I'd shoot a little bit earlier because this is one of the situations where I might not be able to drop exactly where I want to go I can feel here the core's running out, my strand is running out, um, but because I dropped up from the top here, I can't drop up from the I can't drop on the top again. Otherwise, I'll just end up with two lower strands, and that'll just end up making uh, a spiral running through or uh, a mistake in the the plating. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my measurement, uh, and if you remember. We wanted this to drop out at, what was it, 24.5 on the whip, so with the handle inch included, 25.5. And I want this to drop out on the bottom. So I have a choice. I can either drop it out slightly before, or I can come down one more plating until this gets back up to the top again. Um, and see where it is then. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it a little bit further. So it might actually drop out a little bit further than where I want. But that's okay. I keep the keep the, the uh, tape to hand and on the next one I can bring it back to exactly my segment length. There's enough redundancy, there's enough coverage uh, in the design to be able to have a little bit of play uh, in where you drop. Okay, so I'm going to take that one around under two over one and then I'm going to keep on plaiting until this one is back at the top again. So I'm going under one over two under two, over one. Let's just check these. Yeah, one more on that side. Okay. So there I have my strand that I want to drop here. I'm going to do a quick measurement, see where we're at. 25.5 and actually it's dropped in just exactly where I want it to go so I'm going to drop this one from the bottom so just to remind you how to do that separate that one out under 2 over 1 I'm going to lay it in and then I'm going to plait the next one over it under 1 over 2 and then I'm going to tie that one back out the way and carry on uh, as if it wasn't there. So under two over one. And on this side now it becomes under one over one. You can see here, it's not quite tight enough. That's okay, we can plait down until everything around it is nice and tight. Uh, and then before we clip it off, we'll give that a good tug and just settle it in nicely. Okay, so I'm going to leave you now. I'm going to plait on. Uh, and I'll get you to join me at the next drop. Okay, I got a little bit carried away with myself there, and I've actually had to um, undo a bit and come back again just to show you what I've been doing. Um, which leads me into a little bit on the sort of what's going through my mind as I'm as I'm doing this stuff. If you make a mistake, um, it, it's don't get frustrated. It, it it only gets in your way. Um, just kind of just just realise that 
undoing and redoing what you've just done is is part of the process of making the thing that you want to make. It's it's all progress. It's all going forward, uh, even though you may feel like you're going backwards. Okay, so I want this one to drop out on 29 on on the whip. So I want this one to drop out at 30. Uh, as we're plaiting it, because that extra inch at the end. So this is the strap I want to drop out, and I want it to drop out at the top. So I'm going to come one more round, and I think that will put us almost exactly on our 30 inches there. So let's just do one more round. So under one, over one. Uh, <laughs> under two, over one. See, still get confused, even after doing loads and loads of this. And the reason why I'm only using a single colour uh, to make the foundation, and in fact I do that on all the whips, I make the, the foundation in one single colour. Um, the reason being is that when you drop it into the wax, the different colours potentially might shrink at different rates. Um, now, if that happens, it's a bit of a disaster. Um, and if it does happen, um, uh, it means that it can only happen to the overlay. If you've made all this in one single colour, this is all going to shrink back at the same rate. So if your overlay mucks up, then all you've got to, well, all you've got to do, it's still pretty heartbreaking, but you'd have to take off the overlay, uh, and then you've you've still got all of this work, all of the core that you've made, um, is still in a situation where you can plat over the top of it, um, and not lose too much work and too much cord. So I'm nearly there, this is the strand that I want to drop out, it's nearly getting to where I want to drop it out. Let's just double check that. I think I've got one more to go. On there. Yeah, so 30 inches. It's just shy of 30 inches, but that's okay, we'll take it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in like I'm going to plait it, pull it tight, let it go, and I'm just going to tie it off loosely up the top here. And then I'm going to carry on as if it wasn't there, so I'm going to come under one over one under one over one and we're going to keep plaiting down until we come to drop out the next strand now this is where it's going to get a little bit different all the drops we've done so far have either been from the top or the bottom from the left or the right um, but we can't plait with three strands in these patterns. So I'll show you what I'm going to do when we get to that drop. And I'll join you then. So we're here now where we want to drop off our next strand. And you can feel in the core here that's where this one's come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my steel ruler and I feel at that point and I'm going to measure our four and a half inches plus half an inch so that'll give us five inches. And I'm going to take my lacing needle you might notice the little hole that's there already. It's because I've already done this once, but I had to take it out again because I forgot to roll the camera. <sighs> okay, so pushing in through the side wall. Hold that there. And I'm going to push my lacing needle through. I'm going to feel where this one ends. And you can actually feel it with the lacing needle as well. You'll start to feel a little bit of resistance. You don't want to push too far and start compressing this one. You just want it just at the end there. And I'm just going to come through the side wall gently. Again, we don't want to tear anything out, rip anything out. So here's the next strand that I want to run along here, inside here 
and then to drop out here. So I'm going to take this one. Now you don't have to do these in order. Uh, there's plenty of excess on these to be able to drop them out in any order you like. But just for my own peace of mind, I like to drop them out in the order that they come in. So this is my next shortest strand. I'm going to take it, push it through all the way to the top there. And I'm going to snip it off. Yeah, sharp scissors are better. Oh, you never seem to find it there. Flame. Melt that one in. Just wait for it to harden up for a second or two. And then I'm going to come back to this point. And I'm going to compress all the string behind it. Give it a tug to pull it through. And the same on this end. If it's not coming easily, you can just kind of work it like this. And eventually it will come through. So, as before, I'm going to pull this one through and we can see already that we've got some twist in here. I don't want it to lay twisted, so I'm going to pull all of that twist through. And then we're going to take that twist out. You can see here I'm kind of caterpillaring things along. And it's just until I've managed to get that twist inside and all this is lying straight. And then I can just push that up and things come through very easily then. There we go. I'm going to pull down from the top. Make sure everything is lying nice. And then I'm going to pull the outer sleeve back by a little bit, half an inch or so. And snip it off. And then when we pull again, straighten everything up, you'll see that just hides itself nicely on the inside. So we've just got one last drop to do here. This, this last strand to come out and this one's going to run on the outside for this section on the outside for this section and then it's going to disappear inside of our core around here so I'm going to move the camera along a little bit uh, and I'll show you how I do the last one so we're here on the last one this is the one I want to drop out it's going to come out under here and the same as before I can feel where my last strand is dropping out just about here so we're going to go 4.5 and 5 inches. So I'm going to take my feed once more. And let's put it into through the side wall. Pull it back out again. And then we're going to go in with the lacing needle. You can actually just use the lacing needle. Uh, the fit does make it a little bit easier though. So we're going to come across, come along to where that last one dropped out. I'm going to push on through. I'm going to take that strand and try and get as much of the twist out now before it's actually attached. But for some reason, it never seems to work out that way. You always end up having to fiddle it when it's going through. So up to the top. Make sure that's nice and tight in there. We're going to cut it off well with a sharper pair of pincers. There we go. And then we're just going to melt that end. So then we're going to pull that through. And let's say I 
doesn't need a little tug. All the way through. And we're just going to check that. Actually, looks pretty good this time. So I'm just going to keep on pulling. And yeah, I don't think I've got any twists that I need to take out. So I'm going to keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. Remember, I want it to pull tight into the plaiting up here. So I'm going to pull on this strand first, nice and tight. And then we want all of this to lie nice and flat with that. So we're going to pull on the outside and get all that laying nice. Then I'm going to pull back just half an inch or so. And we'll snip off there. And then as we pull our sleeve back over, that will disappear inside nicely. Now, we could just plait over the top of this. But there's something like, well, there's actually two transitions uh, in a whip. There's a transition of stiffness at the handle end, where the metal handle ends and you go into the thong of the whip. Um, but there's also a transition in stiffness here. Can you see that? No, you can't. <laughs> there's also a transition in stiffness here, where we stop plaiting. So I am actually going to bind this section here, and I'll show you how to do that in a little while. Um, the reason being is that binding then makes this part of the whip, which is unplatted, the same stiffness as if it was plaited. Um, because if you imagine these, it's almost like a, if you take a, a piece of paper and you put a concertina in it, it's it has more stiffness than just a flat piece of paper. And it's a similar thing when we come to the end of here, we're, we're stopping our plat plaiting, and then all of a sudden we've got this section which isn't plaited. So even though the amount of material that we've got is tapering down nicely, the stiffness itself isn't. So what we're going to do is we're going to bind in this area to make this as stiff as this area um, and have a nice transition in between our plaited, uh, plaited area and our non-plaited area. And we're also going to bind up at the handle end as well uh, where our handle stops uh, and the thong begins. There's a little bit more binding at the very, very end at the handle end. Uh, we're going to bind up there and chop off those knots. The other thing which you've got to do before we're ready to roll the whip uh, is to start cutting out these strands here. So I'll probably just show you on one or two of these uh, how I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to cut them off. Uh, I like to melt them in, but you don't have to. The reason I melt them in um, is because if you've got little fluffy bits, sometimes they can poke through into the next layer. Um, they're actually going to be held by the next layer. Uh, and on this first belly, it doesn't matter too much because we've got another belly and then an overlay to go on top. So I'll reset up the camera and I'll show you how we clip off these parts. Uh, and I'll show you how to melt them in, uh, although on this first belly, it's not entirely necessary. So I'm going to show you here on this one. This one's probably a little bit more complicated than the others, but uh, it's essentially the same deal. So what I'm going to do before I cut it off, I'm just going to give it a pull and I'm going to give it a pull in the direction that it wants to lay in. So if I pull down the way, I might stretch where these strands want to lie. So I'm just going to support this one because this is quite thin uh, and because this section isn't plaited. So I'm going to put my fingers here. I'm going to give that a nice tug. And then I'm going to cut that one off. So then being very careful not to melt any of the other strands. I'm just going to come in here and just melt the end of this one, lick my finger, and then squish it in. So on this one I thought I'd go through the same process but show you how I do that just with a standard lighter. You can't always get your hands on um, uh, one of the flame jet lighters so I'm going to use this one and just show you how I I do it with that one. So it's a similar sort of thing. I'm going to take the strand that I want to take out and support here, give it a good tug. That's actually pretty well laid in already because of 
the plaiting up above it. And I'm going to take my scissors, and this is the reason why I like scissors, is that there's always, because of the way they go, there's always a little bit of fluff that sticks out when you cut off with them. Uh, and I find that gives just enough to be able to melt them in. So this time round, I'm going to turn it up the way, and remember heat rises, so what you can do is you can just sort of bring your lighter down onto the top, and you get some control then of how this thing is melting. And I'll lick my finger and squish it in. So I'm going to go along, I'm going to do all of these. Uh, and then I'll take you up to the top to show you how we're going to do the binding. first bit of binding we're going to do before we roll the rip, whip uh, is just up here. The reason for that is um, when I, when we roll the whip, you'll see what I mean by that in, in a few moments' time, um, these knots can get in the way a little bit. We're also going to be cutting off uh, an inch from the top of here, uh, which means that if we do that and we haven't bound this, all these strands can come loose. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off, uh, I like to use a clove hitch, um, but you can use just any particular knot that you like. The reason I like the clove hitch is because it lies nice and flat, um, which isn't too much of an issue on this bit, because we're going to end up with a handle knot here. We're going to have to build up this section anyway. So I'm going to pull that reasonably tight, uh, and I'm going to use the roll here uh, to pull tight. Now the first couple times around I do it, uh, I don't want to pull this knot out of place, so I'm not putting it a huge amount of tension on. You see there where it slipped until I've got a few layers on, and you might want to go over that tail a couple times. Okay, so we've got ourselves nicely bound there. Just going to clip that off for neatness sake. Yeah, me. It's lunchtime. I don't know if you guys are going to hear my belly rumbling or <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to go around, and you can kind of see when I'm pulling how tight that's getting. And the good thing about this stuff, as I mentioned in the tools video, is that this stuff is waxed, so it kind of grips itself. I'm going to go around until I'm confident that these are very tightly held. Something to be aware of when you're uh, using a spool to tension like this. I don't particularly like the spool because what happens is as the string comes to the end, if I pull too hard on that, it can end up pulling off a whole chunk off here. So if I notice that I'm getting to the end, what I'll do is roll out a load until I've got it back in the middle again. And then that gives me something to pull tight on. So I'm going to go around a couple more times. Okay, so apologies for that. So <laughs> I'm just going to do that once more. Make sure that's nice and tight. Put a couple layers on. Careful when you're pulling on this stuff. I mean, my hands are tough as leather, um, but it's quite easily, it's quite easy to kind of pull it hard enough that you cut your own skin. Um, so be careful if you need to wrap it around something like a pencil or something like that, give you something to pull on, or leave it on the roll. Um, what I like to do here is to do uh, a few half hitches. So that's just literally going through, going around itself and through that loop. So I'm going to put the first one on, pull it tight, and pull one way and then the other way. Now I'm going to put another one on the same. And what you'll see is that the the second knot kind of sits right next to the first knot, so backwards, forwards, and we'll do the same again. And that gets that nice and tight. So, just to finish this off, I'm going to clip it off. And like the other stuff, I'm just going to melt that down, being careful not to melt anything underneath it. Lick my finger and stick it down. And that's the other nice thing. Um, 
about this stuff, the synthetic um, sinew, uh, is that you can melt it into stuff in the same way as you would with the rest of your cord. You don't actually have to use synthetic sinew for this part. You could use uh, any other strong uh, thread because, like I said before, we're going to be building up uh, this handle section, this, this section later on. Um, so it doesn't matter particularly uh, how flat this pet part lies. All we want is it to be able to roll nicely on the board uh, and to hold these in place. So I'm going to take you down the other end now and I'm going to show you how I uh, bind for the transition uh, and that's the that's nearly us at the rolling stage then. So here we are and we're going to start um, binding this transition here and all we're trying to achieve uh, is just to make this section a little bit stiffer so that we don't end up with like uh, a drop off like a hinge in the stiffness of this plaited section and into this section we don't want to add any bulk because we've already got uh, our material dropping off which all gets squished together by the next layer so we've already got the taper that we want just want to increase the stiffness from this section here down to halfway along where our last strand drops out so in order to do that i'm going to use this stuff this is the artificial sinew you used before um, and i'm just going to take one of the strands and i'm going to put a clove hitch on that uh, it might be easier for you to watch someone else's video on how to do a clove hitch because <laughs> it's a little bit fiddly with this stuff and I'm not sure is it? I'm showing it all that clearly. Anyway, got a clovage on there. Now, well, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to clip that off just yet. I'm going to wait until everything's a little bit more fixed. Um, I'm going to make sure that I've got some of my cord there, my sinew in the middle here so I can pull on it. Now I'm going to go up a little bit I'm going to just going to bind in the same angle as our plaiting it is I'm going to take this right the way up the top and I'm going to start going like I say at the same angle and I'm just going to follow this kind of once or twice around the way and then I'm going to start coming back down the way like so and what I'm trying to do is trying to keep a 45 degree angle all the way along and as you can see after I've laid it over I'm pulling it tight now don't be too worried as you're coming down the way turn a little bit further up. as you're coming down the way if you're getting a little bit of sort of bobbling going on it's not looking quite circular yet uh, that will be sorted out because we're actually going to come back up the way crossing over ourselves so I'm just going to pass round, round, round. This also makes it a little bit easier to plat over because everything's kind of already in place. And the reason why I'm binding this is because the other reason why I'm binding this now, before we roll it, uh, is so that uh, where we've got it gripped in by the outside sleeve, when we take the tension off at the end, uh, things won't move around uh, when we're rolling it. You'll see sometimes when, when you're rolling it, the small end of the whip can kind of whip around quite a lot. So here, I'm now going to come back up the way. So I'm going to come around this way and I'm going to start crossing over where I laid in before. Now 
on this bit, I'm going to come a little bit further up from where I need to. I'm going to come up into this section. And then I'm going to snip it off. And as before, I'm just going to put in a couple of half hitches just to hold it. So let's move those tails out of the way. Come round and through itself. Last but not least, I'm just going to clip off these ends uh, and melt them in, mainly just so they don't get in my way. So I'm going to be very careful not to burn anything underneath. Oh, and lick your finger before you do that, unless you've got Kevlar hands like mine. There we go. So we've still got one more transition to do. We've still got transition up towards the handle end to do. Uh, but I want to cut off those knots, which I'll show you now. Uh, and then we're going to give the whip a roll before we bind the transition. And you'll see when we roll the whip, um, it has a great effect on smoothing out the platen patterns. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is just cut off uh, these knots here um, so that I can make this easier to roll, basically. Uh, now I tend to use a razor blade for this. I use a safety razor to shave with um, and that means I've got a lot of these around. Be careful if you're handling these because both edges can cut. Um, the other reason why I use a razor blade is because they're, they're pretty much disposable uh, and I don't want to lose an edge which I've had to sharpen on a knife or something like that. Um, now the easiest way I've found to do this is to find your knot or find one of the knots and literally just to slice straight through that knot. And then you'll see that it kind of opens up. You end up with two of the strands. a little bit and kind of pull these out and then I'm going to go around with my scissors uh, and clip off around here I'm going to one of the nice things about working with the synthetic stuff is that now we've got all these fluffy ends we can come in with a lighter melt all these together and it means that everything's going to be joined still at the back here. Now normally I'd do this with my finger. Uh, I'd lick my finger to squish it all down once it's melted. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it with a butter knife because I really don't want you guys to hurt yourself. This stuff is nasty, it's sticky and hot and it's entirely possible to hurt yourself. I'll just go around just melting, melting, melting don't want anything to burn, that's why I'm not staying on one patch too long. But you do want everything nicely melted together. And once it's kind of all sitting there a bit molten, I'm just going to come in quickly with a butter knife and just smooth everything down. I'm 
Okay, so that's all attached in quite nicely. Everything's melted together. Uh, I'm now going to take this uh, and roll it. Uh, so I'll see you there. Uh, we have our core here, um, uh, our first belly, sorry. Uh, and I'm going to give it a roll. Now what you want is a, is a hard flat surface, uh, a clean one. What I'm using here is a, it's actually from, from Wilkinson's, it's um, uh, a surface protector. Uh, so it's a piece of marble and they come with like a polished side and a rough side. And I'm actually using the rough side which is still pretty smooth. Uh, it just has a little bit better grip. But you can use anything, a piece of wood, whatever you like really, so long as it's smooth and flat. And what we're going to use to roll with uh, is just something heavy. You know, I've, I've used all sorts of stuff for this. Um, I usually grab what comes to hand, and what comes to hand this time uh, is an old lead acid battery. Uh, it's heavy, I've taped up the things, uh, it's smooth on the bottom. Uh, I know it's not going to do any damage to the whip as I'm rolling, um, and it, it gives me some grr to be, able to, uh, to be able to squish things down. Now as I start rolling, I don't really want to roll the binding here, just because I don't want to encourage that to come loose. So I'm going to roll all the way along, moving things up, moving things up. Uh, until I get here. I might roll just this little bit here where this transition is but I'm not, again, I don't want to encourage any of this to come loose so I'm not going to roll here too much. I'm just going to go along all our braided section. I'll give you a bit of a close-up now so you can see the plaiting as it is before it gets rolled. And you can see it's got this almost sort of sawtooth kind of profile on the outside and as we roll it all that's going to squish together uh, and become very nice and smooth. So, here we go. Now I'm going to use my other hand on the other side. Apologies, I had to answer the door again. Um, yeah, so as, as you come down, this might be a little bit out of round uh, on the five strand or on like the seven strand section or whatever. And it might not want to roll quite as easily. That's why I've got this other hand here. And you can start with less pressure and then just increase that pressure as it wants to roll. You're going to turn this around for the last section just so that I'm not running on where we have it now. Okay. So I'll give you a close up now, and you can see the difference that that's made. Squishing everything nicely. There we go. Now I've got a little bit of a lump here, so I'll probably just go back uh, and roll that a little bit more. But essentially now we're ready to put it back up on the hook. And what we're going to do next is bind the transition in between the handle and the thong. I've measured uh, back an inch and a half from the end where my handle is, so my handle's here at 12 inches, so I've tied on with a clove hitch uh, just here at 10 and a half inches, and what's going to happen is I'm going to bind all the way down uh, in a solid pattern until I get, I don't know, inch and a half over the end, past the end of the handle, uh, and then I'm going to use a couple of different patterns to then taper off our uh, our binding. So I'll start from here and I'll pass it around. This first bit is just to kind of get everything set so don't worry if it moves around a little bit at first. I'll soon find that it will grip onto itself. And so with this bit I'm wanting to bind without any gaps in it. So you can see here I'm going around once and then pulling it tight. Going around one, 
this point in time. Uh, and I'm going to keep binding like this for a little bit. So I will probably speed this section up. Okay, so we've got down this far, and as you can see, this has already stiffened up this section quite a bit, but if we were just to stop here, we would have a second sort of transition um, where our binding drops off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to switch patterns. So I'm now going to do kind of like we did with the other transition. I'm going to move more into a diamond pattern, so I'm going to follow... Our pattern down and I'm going to do this I like to keep quite a short transition um, it's kind of a stylistic thing I mean it's similar to the whip uh, that I learned with and the thing I like about a short transition you want it stiff and you want it all to taper off properly uh, you don't want a wet noodle on the end of on the end of a stick um, but I like a short transition because it means that you end up with more uh, kind of working working thong and um, I think that looks nicer on stage. So I'm going to keep on binding here. Let me come round to just shy of where my first dropout is. And then I'm going to come back up the other way. So that's good, just about there. Now I'm going to come back up this way. And then I'm actually going to come down to about here, again in the diamond pattern. You'll see that in a moment. So we're going to come back over ourselves, trying to maintain that kind of 45 degree angle. So when I get to here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come around the back and I'm going to come back down again and I'm going to try and split where I've come through before. So this time around I'm going to come in between that one, in between that one. And I'm only going to come halfway down this time. And this is just to give us a nice tapering off. of our stiffness. So one more and then I'm going to come back up the way. And then once I get back up to here I'm going to come back into our solid pattern. So I'm going to come so there's no gaps.
so we're nearly at the top again now. We don't want to put too much binding in here because our next layer wants to go on and we don't want to create uh, a lump here. We just want to stiffen up this transition. So I'm going to come ever so slightly past where I did before. And then we'll tie it off. It's nice if you can get these two together, you can melt them together, but you don't have to. Uh, I am going to just snip it though. Again, being very careful not to melt what's underneath. And so that's it, that's our first belly. Uh, and we've now got it ready, we've got our transitions uh, tapered in their stiffness. Uh, we have the end done, we have all our pieces ready. Um, so that's it for this video, uh, and I'll take you through on the next one, how I put in the second belly, which is very similar to this one, and then finally we'll get to the overlay. Alrighty, thanks for watching.